Okay, so um, my name is Frédéric Beblacois. I'm working at IRCAM in Paris. Um, so IRCAM is more an uh, institute for research uh, in sound technology, music technology. But as you see, I, I'm, I'm doing research also with motion. Um, so one of the things we've been uh, doing, for example, is creating uh, new devices to control or interact with digital sound. And that could be a small object, or you can create objects that when you move, they're going to activate sound or transform sound. Or that could be through the touch on the surface. So if I show them to <coughs> So if here, for example, it's like if you have water inside the object and you can tilt it. And you can play with kind of a balance. interact with the table and we use the sound created on your table by the finger and then we actually uh, modify the sound or just replace with another synthesis. Is that just a pickup mic? Yeah. <laughs> and you can also create different Playful scenario where you start to play uh, music by just playing football. We actually made an, a whole installation with this uh, ID. I'm going to stop here and switch to. Uh, so, so that's the type of things we're doing with music. We're also dealing with uh, acoustic instruments, we augment with sensor, but we have been also working quite a lot with uh, different dancers. And I'm going to show a few things that where actually there is no much sound, which is quite interesting. Um, so you, you, we, you've seen on, on Friday, uh, uh, Miriam Goffing, so I collaborated with her uh, in 2005 on a project that was a piece of her called This Is My House. And actually, uh, these things you see on, on the picture are screened and on the screen, the dancer was seeing a dance score created by her. And as she explained, it was an open score, uh, meaning that, well, there are some choices in the score, but also the choice of the score at the moment was chosen depending on uh, different things we were measuring on the body of the dancer. So always feel bad showing sensor and things you add, uh, I feel guilty, I don't know why, but uh, the idea, that was her idea, is to really capture different uh, motion, different flexion, the briefing, and we were analyzing the data during the piece, and depending on, uh, for example, the synchronicity between dancer, the five dancer, that was uh, used to make a choice on the next score the dancer was seeing. So, I mean, she would be better to explain all the artistic uh, idea behind that. Um, but just to show, uh, I mean, some of the technology and to say it's kind of interesting research that's very done during the making of a piece, and I think it's very interesting and extremely rich. And I, I must admit, I, I, I learned a, extremely uh, a lot of things doing that as, as a researcher. 
So uh, switching to a, a totally different approach, uh, working with uh, uh, Richard Siegel, who danced for a long time with Foresight, uh, he developed this idea of the, what he called the if then system. It's also a score, but it's a more the idea that it's a causal relationship between motion. Uh, if I do this, then the other dancer, there is rules, and the other dancer might do another type of motion. And at the time when I, 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 I met him in 2006, I was explaining his system, and then I had developed a system to do gesture recognition. And then we decided that it could be interesting to uh, work together, trying to make a system where uh, we can automatically detect uh, some motion based on a vocabulary, uh, and then see if the, the computer system could really follow the motion and the rules as it defined in the score. So here you're going to see, can you see? Um, uh, here, that's a real dancer holding some sensor, and in the back it's a video, and there were some motion recorded, uh, and if the system can guess the motion the dancer is doing, it's going to synchronize the video. Um, so the, then the, the video is going to be uh, showing the same, same thing as the dancer dancing. I don't know if that's clear. But if I show the video, so each time he started uh, a motion, the computer has to guess which motion it is, and then it synchronizes. So you, so here it's, it's going too fast. It's okay. And, and there is a slight delay, and now we, we are able to walk out and to, to make up for the delay, because once you guess which gesture is done, you can actually display the video a little bit above, before the time. Now he's playing, and then the computer is lost, but what it has to do. Can you provide the computer? Yeah, so uh, it, it, it's really to explain how it works. Uh, after you use that in a piece called Omodulins, where you really improvise and play with this type of system. So most of the time, you don't really see the, the, the a direct relationship. It's something you can play with it. Um, <coughs> now, what I want to show. Is uh, we, we use that in an in in installation where uh, you're invited to see uh, you see a motion here that's proposed to you, and if you actually do this motion, you see Richard following you on the video. So you have to do a certain motion, and if you do the motion, then Richard is doing the same thing as you. As, it, as in a mirror. So it's like a mirror, but instead of seeing yourself doing the motion, you see which are doing the motion. So I show you. Uh, this quickly. And there is a whole sequence. So that's like the, the, the first, one of the first motion, you see here the proposed motion. If she's doing the motion, then the video is synchronized. And the interesting thing, you also record it while doing the motion, and after you see yourself on the screen. <laughs> and there is something that, uh, 
gives in other motion. And something I, I wasn't really expected uh, somehow when we designed the installation that when you see yourself afterwards, most of the people laugh <laughs> and found it very funny. And, and there is really something interesting that uh, you, you, you have the intention of doing the motion, you actually don't have to do it extremely well <laughs> to have the interaction. And you think you're, great, you, you think you're a great dancer when you do the motion because you see the, which are doing perfectly well the motion. And then when you see yourself, you're shocked. Unless you're a good dancer, but <coughs> you are quite shocked. And then after that, so we have a, a database of maybe, I don't know, 50,000 small videos of people. Uh, so you, you see, for example, it's, uh, different people uh, imitating the motion. So look at this person. He's supposed to really go down, and as he doesn't want to do it, he's stuck in the middle, seeing the video uh, in the same position. So you, that really forced you to do the whole motion uh, to see the video. So I think that it would be quite interesting to actually pursue these type of things and, and make uh, yeah, some really interesting study to do to do about the perception of your own motion and, and the perception of what you see. That wasn't really intended. It was most thought as a just a artistic installation. Um, no, So and, uh, I'm going to finish with that. It's uh, other type of uh, collaboration that was with the company Emil Greco. And here the idea was, um, uh, before it was really, you do uh, the motion defined as really the trajectory, uh, given trajectory and posture and transition you have to do. And here it was more to think about what's important is more the, the quality of motion uh, quality of movement and the intention. That's something we actually started before and it's of course extremely challenging to do it from a technology point of view. But we end up doing something very similar <coughs> in installation where you, you see uh, Emil Greco giving instruction, instruction, you have to dance in the space and you see uh, kind of the abstract silhouette of what you're dancing with some indication and some sound feedback. And we work out a system that supposedly is reacting to the different quality of motion. Uh, just one, fun, one thing I want to say is that to do that, we had to really develop a vocabulary uh, kind of uh, agreement on the language, and that was maybe the most interesting things to do. And one, one of the most important things that uh, was achieved, uh, and there are still a lot, a lot of things to do uh, on the quality of motion. Maybe very quickly. Um, no, I don't have time, it's okay. And just now finishing about our current project I'm working on, it's really coming back to the sound. Is um, in all these installation I've shown, and very interesting things happening is that you have to learn. You have to learn the motion, and in installation are tools for the learning. So um, they are not perfect tools, but you can actually. Uh, see and so something that wasn't really uh, I wasn't really satisfied with the installation uh, with Emil Greco was the sound feedback and now we're really working on 
to really see how a sound feedback can help you to do a motion. And to, they are actually very, um, not much study about the interaction between the, the sensory motor uh, learning the perception of, of motion and uh, when it's coupled with the sound feedback. And going back to the very things, the small interfaces I show is that you can do very fun stuff with, with interfaces, but we don't really know how to learn this, to play this uh, new instrument. So just to, that's what I'm really working on right now. So that's 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs>